Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to my full review of the OnePlus 12. If you haven't seen my unboxing and initial impressions video, make sure you go watch that. But I have been dailying this phone for the past two weeks to get a good feel for it. And I have a bunch of notes here on my Z Flip 5 to kind of keep me on track. So let's just jump right in and talk about the price of this phone and where it fits into the market, okay? So this starts at $799 for the 256 gig storage and 12 gigs of RAM and $899 for the 512 gig storage with 16 gigabytes of RAM, which is the one we have here. Let me go in and show you guys. Okay. Settings, let's see, about, there we go. Um, 16 gigs of RAM and 512 gig storage. Okay, so that's the one we have here today. And uh, currently, OnePlus is still offering the $100 trade-in for any phone in any condition. So that essentially makes the base model $699 and the 512 storage model $799. I'm going to go into this review with the, the base MSRP, okay? But even at the base price, I think this is a very compelling option. I think it's worth buying over a Pixel 8 series and even the S24 series Unless there are certain features on either of those phones that you really can't go without, okay? Because the OnePlus, as you're going to find out in my review, has lots of neat little features that I really, really enjoy. So there we go. The pricing and where it kind of fits into the market. I, I think Oxygen OS is a very nice operating system and it fits in well, okay? Let's talk about the unboxing. When you're spending money, no matter how much it is, it makes you feel like you're getting more for your money and that the company actually took time to think about how they want their customers to feel when opening a product. And on the OnePlus here, I brought some boxes down here to compare. We have a big, big box. Okay, let me scoot this to the side. Here is the OnePlus 12 box. Okay, nice and thick. And for comparison, just, just look at this, okay? Here's an iPhone box. Really tiny, right? Z Flip 5, let's bring in that box. I think that's even tinier. It's about the same size as the iPhone. Z Flip 5 box. And when you're spending money, see, this is the iPhone 13 box. 829 brand new. Okay, Z Flip 5, well over a thousand. I think it actually maybe starts at a thousand, but the one I have is over a thousand. Whereas the top of the line one plus twelve, eight ninety nine. Okay, so when I unboxed the the Z Flip Five and my iPhone, I was just like, wow, you know, that that's really all I get, just my device, nothing else, no case, no no charger. You know, it just it just kind of makes you like like come on now. I'm I'm giving I'm giving this company enough of my money. Can they not put a little something in the box, you know? And we're gonna find out why this box is so big, but it's nice to see a good unboxing because OnePlus I think you could say cares a little bit more about how their customers feel when they unbox the device versus the phones I just showed you. And Pixel is guilty too, you know. Pixel 8 series, Pixel 7, whatever. Guilty of not including anything in the box, okay? You might get a cable, but definitely not not a charger. And of course, the reason this box is so big is because you get the charger, which is just totally epic to see with the 2024 flagship when most companies have taken the charger away. So, when when I unboxed this and I saw the charger, I was like, wow. It, it just, it adds more value to the device because you get the charger in the box along with those advertised charging speeds. So here we go. 80 watt charger in the box. There you go. It's, it's a pretty big charger compared to here is my Ugreen Nexode. This is a 30 watt USB-C charger. So as you can see there, pretty big difference, but definitely nice that they include it along with, of course, the OnePlus Red cable. 
And I gotta say, for a charging for a charging cable that's included in the box, that one, the OnePlus feels like the most high quality charging cable I've ever ever felt. You know, it's nice and thick. It can handle, I think, up to maybe 100 watts or at least 80. You know, which is what this this charger is. So the advertised charging, you actually get this in the box. In my opinion, that makes this an even better deal. So now for the specs. You get two colors, flowy emerald or silky black here in the US. So let's take the case off this, that silky black. There you go. Looks great. I do wish there was more color options. So, you know, if you have a friend or someone who gets this device, the odds of you guys having the same color is very likely, you know. So I do wish they had more colors. This phone comes with Android 14 and Oxygen OS 14. You get four years of Android updates with an additional year of security updates. The Snapdragon 8 Gen 3, 256 gigs or 512 gigabytes of storage, UFS 4.0. IP65, which is a bit of a bummer that it's not IP68, but I can live with that. You know, at least there's some sort of IP rating there. For the display, it's a 6.82 inch 1440p LTPO AMOLED and 120 hertz, 1600 nits high brightness mode, 4500 nits peak brightness when you're in direct sunlight. You know, I don't think you're really going to see see that. It's it's more important to focus on the 1600 nits when you're in high brightness mode. You get always on display and dual speakers, which they do sound fantastic. I'm going to talk about those. For the rear cameras, you get a 50 megapixel wide angle at f1.6, a 64 megapixel telephoto at f2.6, a 48 megapixel ultra wide at f2.2. In terms of video recording, you can do 8K at 24 FPS, 4K at 30 or 60, 1080p at 30, 60, 240, or 480, you know, for those slow-mo shots, electronic image stabilization and Dolby Vision. And for the selfie camera, it's a 32 megapixel f2.4. Now, the video on the front-facing camera is capped at 30 FPS, so you might as well just record in 4K. That's a bit of a bummer. I wish this had 60 FPS. Uh, recording on the front facing camera hopefully maybe maybe oneplus can do that with an update or do that on the next oneplus phone the oneplus 13 this phone supports wi-fi 7 bluetooth 5.4 you get nfc you get an ir blaster an optical under display fingerprint sensor face unlock a ginormous 5400 milliamp hour battery that supports up to 100 watt charging but like i just showed it comes with the 80 watt charger in the box, 50 watt wireless charging, that's with the OnePlus AirVook, I think it is, they call, and you get 10 watt reverse wireless charging. So far, it ticks a lot of boxes, you know. Let's talk about the build and design, okay? Let's let's take a look around this. Let's scoot that to the side there. Let's take a look around the phone. So, this does have a screen protector. On the bottom, you get your USB-C, your SIM tray, microphone, and speaker grill. Okay. On the left side, you get the uh, OnePlus alert slider. I'm going to talk more about that, but I really, really like this. On the top, you get another microphone, and there's the IR blaster. I'm not sure what that port is right there, that kind of longer one there on top but do get a microphone and the ir blaster and on the right hand side you've got the power button and the volume rockers and i like that oneplus put the power button low where you can reach it and in terms of build quality and in terms of build quality i think it's excellent it feels very nice especially uh the texture on the back that matte texture it feels absolutely fantastic that's the first time on any smartphone that I felt glass like that. The camera module is pretty huge, but I can forgive that because a lot of phones are kinda, you know, have those big ginormous camera modules. So, and it doesn't look too bad. At first I thought, you know, that's, that's a big old camera module, but you know, I can live with it. That's really my only minor nitpick with uh, the looks. 
Now on the back, it's Gorilla Glass 5, and for the display, it's Gorilla Glass Victus 2. So overall, no complaints whatsoever about build quality. I'm really impressed. It feels like a flagship phone should feel. And so moving on to battery life, it's absolutely excellent. Even in a day of heavy use, I feel so much better knowing how fast this phone can charge up. And with my usage, which, mind you, can vary, but usually I'm just using basic apps and changing my brightness up and down throughout the day, depending on where I'm at. But I'm getting anywhere from 8 to 10 hours of screen on time. That's if I'm willing to drain the battery down under 10%, which I normally don't like to do. But just for the sake of my review, I drained the battery down under 10%. And I got, I think, actually maybe even close to 11 hours of screen on time. So anywhere from 8 to 11 hours of screen on time, which is really, really good. But just remember that this can vary depending on your usage. And out of the box, the OnePlus 12 prioritizes battery life. So if you want the most out of the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3, you have to go into the settings and turn on high performance mode. When you turn it on, they, they tell you, hey, this may consume more battery. So let's, let's take a look at that. Let's go into the settings. So out of the box, by default, this high performance mode is turned off. So if you're doing something intensive, like rendering a video where you need all of the performance, Make sure you go in there and turn that on. Now, as far as the cameras, what I can tell you, I'm personally not much of a picture or video taker, but what I can tell you is these cameras are good. Not the best of the best, definitely not bad, but these are good cameras. And something weird I noticed is the microphones on the OnePlus 12, they don't sound bad, but they have a bit of compression going on. They definitely do. It sounds... There's just a teeny bit of compression going on, and I've not seen anyone else in their reviews mention that. So, but I definitely noticed that when I recorded some video clips and uh, in the recorder app. So in terms of the charging, the 80 watt wire charging with the cable and brick that's in the box, I was able to charge this phone from 2% to 100% in 34 minutes which is absolutely incredible. I've never had a phone that charges that fast. And, and the fast charging speed will change your relationship with your smartphone. That's why I really, really love this phone. My Z Flip 5 was the phone that was in my pocket for months and months. But when I got this, the charging speed is just crazy because you can, you can drain it down to 30 40% and be back up to 80% in like 10 minutes. It's just absolutely outstanding. And so something I noticed early on while using this phone is if for some reason you lose the charger that comes in the box, you're pretty much either going to have to buy an 80 watt, the 80 watt brick and SuperVoot cable from OnePlus or buy a USB-C fast charging brick and USB-C cables that can handle 80 watts or more charging speed. So I tried looking around for a good name brand like Anchor or Ugreen, a USB-A to USB-C cable that could handle 80 watts or more. And I just couldn't seem to find one that stated the wattage it could handle. I could find USB-C to USB-C cables that said the wattage they could handle. But apparently it's difficult to find a good name brand third-party USB-A to C cable that supports 80 watts or more. So in terms of the speakers... These are the best speakers that I've heard on a phone. They're very loud, very clear. They just seem to hit all the frequencies just right. Up until that point, um, between at the time I had a Pixel 7, I still had my iPhone 13 and my Z Flip 5. My Z Flip 5 had my favorite speakers, but this one definitely takes the crown for me. So I think anyone will be more than satisfied with the speakers, and that's really important because all the media we consume online and on our phones like YouTube, YouTube Shorts, TikTok, Facebook Reels, you know, you want you want your speakers to sound good so you can hear what's going on. My next longest section is going to be software and features, and none of this is in any particular order, just like everything I've said so far, it's not in any particular order. For my software and features, it's just things that I've noticed and I will try to show you guys as much as I can. For me, it took a bit of time to get used to the icons around Oxygen OS, like the quick toggles icons 
and the actual setting icon itself in the quick toggle section. Okay, so I'll show you guys here. I must be at some sort of angle that face unlock can't really see me, but if I swipe down, you know, like the location, the phone rotation, the flashlight's not bad, uh, but the airplane mode and, and the settings icon, you know, it just took a little bit of time to adjust to the icon styling around Oxygen OS. Like I said, it's nothing bad at all. Just something I figured I would mention in case someone's coming from like One UI or stock Android. And of course the alert slider, man, it's just so nice. This is a setting that I change a lot. So it's really nice to have a physical button that controls it. And the button also has a texture on the side along with some haptic feedback, depending on the setting you change it to. So when you slide it all the way up, that puts the phone in silent mode. The middle setting is vibrate. And when you slide it all the way down, the phone is in ring mode. So again, on the left side of the phone, can I get you guys up close there, has a bit of a texture. So they're silent all the way up. In the middle is vibrate, and you do get some haptics from the phone to let you know what mode you're in. And then the very bottom is ring mode. So it's just really, really nice to not have to swap down and then tap an icon to change what mode you're in. And I guess you could you could change it from here too, but it's just really cool to have a physical switch. The IR Blaster is a cool touch also, considering there aren't a lot of other phones, especially in 2024, that come with one. And what I mean is, yes, you have other brands like Xiaomi, Oppo, Vivo, you know, brands like that that have an IR blaster. But in terms of phones that are compatible here in the U.S. with all the carriers, the OnePlus, I believe, is one of the only phones to have an IR blaster. For me, in my usage, I'm not sure it will really come in handy, but it may be more useful to other people. You can control things like a cable box, TV, streaming devices, DVD players, fans, lights. There's just a lot of different things you can control in the app. I'll show you guys that app. Okay, so we're going to search IR. Right there we go. IR remote built into the phone. I have some things here. So you would just come in here and you click the add button. And you have all of these options. And so like cable box, and then you would hit your, your choice. And what it will do is it will go through and ask you all this stuff and figure out which remote works with whatever device you're trying to control. So during my initial setup, I thought it was very clean. It was simple. It was straightforward. And I also liked that during the setup, it gave the option to choose the navigation method because there's people out there that still prefer the three, the three button navigation. You know, I like the gestures because it, just more clean looking, but I like that during the setup, it gave the option to choose which navigation method you want to use. So during my time using this phone, I guess the overall feeling I, I get is it's a combination of like stock Android and some good features and customization that the Galaxy brings to the table. It doesn't feel as boring as a Pixel, but not as overwhelming as a Galaxy. Some settings are named a bit differently, I noticed. Like battery optimization is labeled as allow foreground activity and allow background activity instead of normally it's restricted, optimized, or unrestricted. So you may notice certain settings seem vague in describing what they do or the names themselves may be a little bit different than what you're used to. But overall, this is also a minor complaint, just something I noticed differently compared to One UI and stock Android. So if we go in here, let's see, if we go to apps, for example, and then app management, and then like say Amazon, okay? And then we, we click battery usage, so there we go. That threw me off a little bit, but at least it has kind of an explanation telling you what those do. I like that there's a lot less pre-installed apps than on a Galaxy. There's not a OnePlus version of every app like there is on Samsung. There is a few OnePlus apps on here, but it's it's not very much, and I, and I really like that. 
The face unlock is very good. It doesn't work with every single app that supports biometrics, and, and I wish it would, but I understand it's not the most secure face unlock and that the fingerprint scanner is more secure for verification. And the fingerprint scanner is very good as well. Now, in terms of the face unlock, of course, if you're in a dim lit room and there's not much light, you may have issues with it unlocking, but for the most part, the face unlock on this is very good, very fast. I'm not sure what happened there. It might just be my bright light that I have on. Okay, so I've got my eyes closed. I'm gonna turn on the phone and then open my eyes. There we go. I'm gonna open my eyes. There we go. And let's take a look at Okay, can, can I cover this so I can show you guys the... So, no complaints there with face unlock or the fingerprint scanner. The icon pull-down gesture can only be used from the home screen, but I feel like what's the point in using this feature? Because the only apps that it lets you launch are the ones you already have on your home screen, and you can just tap to open those apps easier than the gesture itself. So... To get to that, we're going to tap and hold. At the bottom here, we're going to go to More. So if we turn that on, if you swipe up from the left or right side, like that, let's see if I can do it with my... Yep. So it only lets you launch, you know, apps that you have on your home screen here. But I feel like that seems a little bit harder than just tapping the app itself that you want to open. So if we go into Settings here, just to show you guys, it doesn't work when you're in an app. Can't swipe up. The next thing I have here was really interesting. So when I ran Geekbench, I got a really low score, like a 900 single core and a 4,800 multi-core. And I was really taken back because, you know, it's a Snapdragon 8 Gen 3. But I figured out that in order to get the full performance... In, in the benchmarks, you have to turn on high performance mode. And then the Geekbench scores were where they were supposed to be. So I got 2,181 on the single and 6,661 on the multi-core score. So let's talk about all the haptics on this device. This has the best haptics I've ever experienced. Now, typically I don't use um, haptics while, while typing, but out of the box, this has the haptics while typing, and I have just left it on because it feels really nice. It feels crisp, and there's there's two different settings you can change it between. I think it's called gentle and crisp. The crisp feels really good. I prefer it. It's just really nice because when you're navigating around Oxygen OS, like adjusting the brightness, the volume, scrolling through menus, like if you go into the settings, and let's say you scroll to the bottom, and you've got to the bottom, and you scroll all the way back to the top, you get a little haptic feedback that you've you've hit the top. And so, like, adjusting the brightness and the volume. So it's really nice to have another type of feedback when you're navigating around your phone besides just visually seeing what's happening. So out of the box, the display resolution is set to 1080p. That's not really a big deal, but just something to note. If you do want your display to be super crisp, you'll have to go into the settings and change the resolution to 1440. So let's take a look at that. Uh, display and brightness. Usually don't use my phone with my left hand, so you guys just have to bear with me here. Uh, resolution, there's refresh rate, screen resolution. There we go. Standard is 2376 by 1080, and high is 3168 by 1440. So one of my biggest pet peeves of this phone is I wish when you launch an app from the smart sidebar, it would automatically just open it in full screen or at least have the option to do so instead of opening the apps in a floating window and then having to expand to full screen. But I'm at least happy that OnePlus has a sidebar to quickly get to apps. It's one of my favorite features on, on the Galaxy 2. I, I kind of prefer it on the Galaxies because it opens the apps in full screen. So if I show you guys here, if we do something like, uh, what can I do here? If I open like the Play Store, it opens that floating window and then you have to expand it. 
So let, let's do that again. If we open it and then we kind of go off here somewhere else, you can double tap it. But I wish there was an option to just have these apps open in full screen. So something else I also discovered during my review is Wi-Fi calling with an eSIM on US mobile does not work. So be aware that you may have issues with other carriers if you have eSIM. Wi-Fi calling does work for me though with a physical SIM, but it's not always guaranteed to work with other carriers and things like that. For me, Wi-Fi calling is a must have due to not having cell service at my house. So if it's also important to you, keep keep this in mind that you may have issues with eSIM and Wi-Fi calling not working or, or other features of your cellular plan. So I like how the settings app is organized and the names of the main settings. So like when you're scrolling through here, Wi-Fi, mobile network, Bluetooth, connection and sharing, wallpapers and style. It's just short and to the point, you know? And it's also nice that when you click on a setting like Wi-Fi or mobile network or Bluetooth, that the settings that you're looking at are only related to those particular aspects of the phone. Because sometimes it can be overwhelming to go through nested menus on other flavors of Android to change something simple. I like that at the top of the quick settings, you have two large tiles, and depending on how you organize your quick toggles here, for me, the settings I use a lot are Wi-Fi and airplane mode, so I have those as a large tile. And it's nice that you also get five smaller toggles below the two large ones. The brightness slider is easy to use. You can change the shape of the quick settings tiles to your liking. I actually like the default shape, so um, let's take a look here. Quick settings. If we go right here. So here's where you can customize all that, the shapes. You can customize the shape of the actual icons on your home screen. So if we go right here, icons, you can go through and customize the shape. The rounded corners, the size of the icons. You can do kind of like a material adopt system colors. You can turn that on. Show app names. You can turn that off if you want it to look cleaner. It does look cleaner. I think I'll keep that off. So right here at the bottom, there's three different color palettes that you can theme your device in. I do wish there was more options here. Some of these I don't really like if we click on this one. So let's look at this one here. So if we swap down, it's, it's kind of like a nice blue. We do this one like a green and let's try that one there we go it's like a teal you can also change the font style and the size of the font but I wish there was more options here as well but the default font is nice and I think most people will like it so if we jump in here here's the font size and three different font styles there's lots of nice customizations here in the wallpaper and style section to make the device look however you want. So on the home screen, if you press and hold, you've got these options at the bottom. You can quickly jump in and change your wallpaper, customize the look of your icons, just so you can just jump in quickly from, from the home screen here. You can add widgets, and there's plenty of widgets. Customize the layout, so like the icon layout. Default is a four by six, so I like that, but there's several different ones you can choose from if you want more or less icons on your, on your home screen. You can customize the transitions on your home screen, so here's, here's the default, just a swap, it's kind of like a fade. You can do a roll, like that. You can do a cube, that's pretty neat. can do a flip that's pretty cool card there's that one so I don't really care too much about this but it is nice to see this kind of customization I'm just going to keep that on the default and the very last one is more so this will put you into the home and lock screen settings you can turn on or off global search and so what global search will do is it'll search your apps, it'll search the web and files on your device. You can lock your home screen layout. You can turn on double tap to lock the phone if you like that. 
you can change what happens when you swipe down on the home screen. So you can set that to show your notifications, which, I, which is what I have it on. Global search, which is nice because the keyboard pops up at automatically. It's kind of like on iPhone. Or shelf mode. And what that is, is it shows some widgets like clock, weather, step counter. It has Spotify, if you use that. And a few more other widgets you can add to the shelf mode. You can choose to show the search button on the home screen, which is what I've done here. So you can just tap it and start typing for whatever you want to, you know, there's where we search for the remote. You can change the app animation speed. I like mine on fast. By default, it's on medium. You can turn on raise to wake the phone, double tap to wake or turn off the display. You can choose to show media player on the lock screen. Choose what you want for the lock screen shortcut. There's pocket, mistouch, prevention, recent tasks manager where you can lock apps from going to sleep. So let's take a look through some of these and what I have turned on. <clears throat> so I like drawer mode where you swipe up to get to all your apps. This is what I prefer. My home screen layout is four by six, but you can change that. Here's the icon pull down gesture. I have it set to, oh no, here's, here's the icon pull down gesture, which I have turned off because I think it's, it's a bit silly, but you may like it. There's the global search right there. I have that turned on. You can lock your home screen layout. That way you don't accidentally move icons around. Not exactly sure what icon autofill is. Maybe you guys know, but I have that turned off. Double tap to lock. It's supposed to be able to, when you double tap in an empty space on the home screen, it will lock the device. But let's see, maybe they fixed it because I did get an update during this review. So there we go. So if you guys like that, you can keep that on. I don't think I really, really need that. Swipe down on the home screen. I have that to show the notification drawer. Uh, the global search is kind of like, what do they call it on iPhone? Spotlight. So you can swipe down and just start typing automatically, but I don't mind tapping the icon down here to bring that up as well. And we'll take a look at the shelf mode here. I can show you guys what that looks like. You may like this. So there's the clock. You get the weather. Here's a step counter. And there's Spotify. So you guys may like that. But... I like just swapping down and being able to see my notifications. So that's what I'm going to keep mine set to. So there's the show search on the home screen that I like. App animation speed, I like mine set to fast. Default is on medium. Raise to wake, I don't use this because, you know, I just want to be in control when I turn on my screen. Double tap to wake or turn off the screen. You guys may like that. So if we turn that on. There we go. Try it again. There we go. Show media player on the lock screen. Uh, lock screen shortcuts. We can take a quick look at that. You can have it, and it's only this one over here, the left one. Uh, the camera will remain there. Google Assistant. So it changes it up there. Flashlight. I think I'll just, let's see. What can I do here? Um, maybe I'll set up Google Pay later, but... You have Google Assistant, Google Pay, device controls, flashlight. I guess I can do that. QR code or none. So let's just, flashlight I guess makes pretty good sense. Pocket mistouch prevention. Now I haven't tested this without it. I just left that on because it makes sense. And here's recent tasks manager where you can choose to lock apps in the background so they don't close and you can also display RAM information. So if we turn that on and we swipe up down here at the very bottom, it shows how much RAM is available. So you may like that, but I don't really need to know that. So just keep that turned off. System navigation, where you can jump in here and choose if you want to hide the gesture bar, vibrate on back navigation. So when you swipe back, it gives the haptic feedback. I like that. There's the mistouch prevention. Here's the sensitivity to the back gesture. If you want to go back, you can adjust the sensitivity of the left edge and the right edge. That's really nice to see. Keyboard mistouch prevention. Haven't really tinkered in there. Haven't really had any issues with keyboard mistouches. But here you can do buttons for navigation. 
or the gestures. And something I haven't really tinkered with either is simple mode. There's that on there if you want to use that. You also have the Google feed, which is one of my favorite features on Android. So if we go in and we look at display and brightness, you can choose between light and dark mode. You can set a schedule for if you want it to change back and forth. I just like mine usually permanently on dark mode. Dark mode settings. This is where you can kind of change the look of the dark mode a little bit. There's my brightness, auto brightness. I don't usually use that. Screen color mode. Now, I have changed mine to vivid because I like it. I like the contrasty colors, but you have natural or pro. And also near the bottom, you have different color temperatures. Eye comfort and sleep. I think I actually have that on a schedule. I think I need to turn that back on. You know, this filters blue light, so as you're going to sleep, it will filter out that blue light. Nature tone display. This is kind of like true tone on the iPhones, but... I don't really like mine to adjust. I like it to remain how it is, but you may like that, so you can turn it on. Uh, font, you know, we looked at that. You can jump in and change stuff about the font. Display size. So if you want it kind of more zoomed in to be large, standard, or small. Standard is pretty good for me. Image sharpener, I have that turned off. It says it will enhance the clarity of low-quality images and videos and it says battery usage may be increased. There's auto rotate. Adaptive sleep, it says it keeps your screen on while you're looking at it. Maybe I can try that or just have it auto lock. So uh, there's screen resolution, which we looked at. Refresh rate, so if you wanna lock this to 60 hertz and have just absolutely insane battery life, even more insane than it is, you can do that. Or you can set it to high to constantly have your screen at 120 hertz. Auto select is what I keep mine on. It's plenty smooth. So I also like that when you swipe up for your multitasking, you not only have the large cards, but at the bottom you have the small icons for easy access. And it just makes it a little bit easier. And you also get a nice haptic feedback. And during my review, I did get an update. And the biggest thing that I like that they did is they improved the volume slider. So when I first got this phone, it was a really tiny, kind of like a Android 10 or 11 volume slider. And it, you know, it wasn't a major complaint of mine, but I was going to mention it in my review. But uh, in this latest update for the OnePlus 12, they fixed the volume slider. So it's much, much larger, much more thumb friendly. You know, you can hit the three dots. Those are all large as well. So I like that they... They fixed that, and I'm not really sure why. I mean, I wasn't really using it, but one of the features you may see in other reviews is called app-specific refresh rate, where you can lock certain apps to not run at 120 hertz, and for some reason, even if we search the word specific, OnePlus has taken away app-specific refresh rates, they did add app-specific volume. I'm not sure really how handy that will be for people. But I just think it's kind of weird when a company takes away a feature. It doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. So I'm not going to cover every single feature and setting here on the OnePlus. It has a lot of nice customizations. I think a lot of people will be happy with this. If you think using a Samsung is, is a bit overwhelming, but you feel like the Pixel is too boring like I do, I think you will really, really, really like the OnePlus 12 and Oxygen OS. The biggest feature that has won me over with this phone and why it's now my primary phone in my pocket is the charging speed. It's just absolutely crazy how fast this phone can charge up. Just throw it on the charger while you're getting ready and you can get at least 10, 15% more battery before you walk out the door. And also the insane battery life. The screen's nice and bright. The speakers are fantastic. And it's just nice to see a phone at this price that checks so many boxes. And I highly, highly recommend this phone. So I appreciate you guys watching. Let me know if you have this phone or any other OnePlus phone and what you think of Oxygen OS. And I will see you in the next video.